So, quite an interesting little thing happening on the Twitterverse today. A Mr. Cameron Bartuzzi. Yeah, I believe he's a paisano. He may be a paisano. He's one of the better Christian apologists out there. Matter of fact, most people would say he's a better Christian apologist than me. <laughs> I swear to God. Yeah, most of you would. You know, they have those contests. I always lose those contests. You know, I don't know. They have these, like, March Madness face-off where they put me up against, like, Stephanie. And I lose to Stephanie. I lose to all the apologists. So most people would say he's a better Christian apologist than me. Cameron Bartuzzi. Bartuzzi. Hey, why are you making so many apologetic? Cameron, sit down. Have some pasta. Come on, andiamo. I think he's a paisano, not certain. But he is one of the better Christian channels out there. It's a very highbrow channel. It's, it's almost as good as Inspiring Philosophies. No, it's not as good as mine, obviously. Duh. Duh. It's not even close to as good as mine, but it's... You know, it's up there. It's a really good channel. Actually, it's borderline excellent. Sometimes it's great. There's cool debates, and he gets these really, really high-class guests. So check out his channel. But he did something on Twitterverse. I guess he posted this on Sunday, and it's causing quite a stir. And uh, I'm not sure where he's going with this. He tweets, don't retweet to Google. Big, bold letters. Don't. Emphasis. Don't retreat to Google. Whatever you do. You remember learning that Neptune exists in school, but you've probably never seen it with your own eyes. So why do you believe it exists? Now, I'm going to assume, give him the benefit of the doubt, that he's actually going somewhere with that question. Because he got a lot of response, and all of his responses, I side with the atheists. I, I, I'm guessing that he's going somewhere with that. But the question as framed, the atheist responses are all completely valid, and they're, actually their point is correct. They're guessing that he's going to say, you know, they're using faith to some degree or another. No, they're not. They're not. They don't, they didn't, no, they've never seen Neptune with their own eyes, but they've seen a telescope and everybody knows that a telescope works and everybody knows that you can point a telescope directly at Neptune and then see it with your own eyes. Now, if I could do the same thing with God, okay, then there'd be absolutely zero excuse for being an atheist. There was an atheist coming around, you know, coming over and go, you know, got any evidence? I said, yeah, got real clear evidence. Look directly in this telescope. And they look directly in the telescope and they see Jesus. I go, see? Now shut your full mouth. And that would be the end of it. That would be the end of it. That is empirically verifiable, knowable fact. We don't have to know every minute. We don't have to verify independently by ourselves every second of science. To not have it count as faith. It doesn't count as faith. Why? Because most of the things that we know through scientific knowledge, yeah, we're trusting the body of knowledge as it exists is correct. There's a tiny bit of faith, but that's not really faith as, as Christians mean it. For example, okay, let's make an analogy so you clearly understand what I mean. And remember, atheists, in this particular tweet, I'm siding with you so far. We'll see if he's got a follow-up that explains his point. But so far, I'm siding with the atheists. Yes, sometimes atheists, you know, sometimes I side with the atheists. I'm trying to be fair. I drive past the supermarket almost every single day of my life, okay? I don't actually need to go in and check to know for a fact, for pretty much an established fact, that what they're doing is selling groceries inside of that supermarket. I've seen enough supermarkets with my own eyes enough times to make a reasonable inference that's almost guaranteed to be 100% correct. It's not faith. I'm not driving past the supermarket and believing by faith. Well, you didn't go look at the supermarket, Craig. What if they're selling crack in that particular one? What if? That would be a total upending of reality as I understand it. Now, you want to know God, you might have to be, put yourself in the position to have all of your reality upended as you understand it. Some people call themselves red pill this and that. Take the red pill. What happened when he took the red pill? Or this is the blue pill. I don't know. One of the matrix pills. I forget which one's which. One of the pills you take, and what happens? Your eyes are cleansed, your vision's cleansed, and all reality as you understand it is upended. That actually is what happens in some degrees when you become a Christian. Because most of the things you've been taught of established fact, there's a huge body, about 35% of them, that are, just ain't so. And you learn that almost immediately. Hey, wait, <laughs> if God is actually real, that means this wasn't so, and that wasn't so, and this wasn't so. So, there is some pushback on things you quote-unquote know to be true, but it isn't the established body of scientific knowledge. 
Nobody is believing by faith that Neptune exists. It's, that's just not so. Someone can point a telescope at Neptune and you can look directly at it and see with your own eyes. And we all know we, we're not believing by faith that science works. I, I'm talking into a computer right now and it works. I'm not believing that by faith. I'm experiencing it directly. Now, ultimately, I'm using him as a jumping off spot because he, the, the, the error he seems to be making is one that I'm trying to clarify for my own purposes. It's very similar to the, to, in spirit to the Planaga error. Planaga has argued that Christian belief is properly basic. In other words, I, the practicing Christian, have an inner witness of the Holy Spirit, and, that, and my senses function properly, and I don't need to rationally justify it to anybody. Now this, as I've told you, is true. Also keep in mind that Neptune is not disputed. There's nobody, nobody on planet Earth who's disputing that Neptune exists. It's not disputed territory. Nobody. Nobody who's, who's any validity, no, no sane or reasonable person is out there going, I don't believe in Neptune. Only crazy people. There are plenty of sane and reasonable people who go, I don't believe in God. Correct? So it's disputed territory. So the analogy of Neptune and God doesn't hold on that level either. But let's go back to Planager, because we're going somewhere with this. Now, Planager has argued that I, the practicing Christian, because I have the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, and my senses are correct, my senses are intact, I'm a sane, reasonable, rational human being, and I know for a fact that I had that inner witness of the Holy Spirit, so that is properly basic. It is a belief that I don't need to justify. Now, that is true for me. As I've argued, this is a big difference between rationally, I don't need to rationally justify it to myself. No, in that sense, he's correct. Just like I would not need to rationally justify a migraine headache to, my, to myself. It's, it, is, it is its own reality. My experience, direct experience of it is its own reality. It is rational justification enough for me taking an aspirin. But this does not get us to the non-believer. I cannot say to the non-believer, you know, it's properly basic. It's not properly basic to them. Why? Because they aren't feeling the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. So they don't necessarily believe that that's real. Again, there's a big difference here. I rationally justify it to myself. I don't need to. If my senses are intact and I honestly believe that I'm feeling the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, then for all intents and purposes, I am feeling the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. But to get us somewhere so that it is empirically verifiable fact to someone who isn't me, who can't feel those feelings, that's a completely different thing. And as I have pointed out in my videos, it's the reason why I started commenting on the Cameron Bartuzzi tweet to begin with. I take it as a... As a, as a Science is about the investigation of what's true. Assuming all these things that I'm about to tell you are true, science is ultimately going to give me an empirically verifiable, rational justification for you, the non-believer, so that we both know for a fact that what I'm experiencing is actually true. Why is that, Craig? No way, Craig. Not possible, Craig. One, I'm totally sane. Two, I am 100% experiencing something that is not just real to me, but real. Therefore, science is worth its salt. Science is going to back me up and be able to evidence the actual reality of the thing I'm experiencing. Just science doesn't quite know how to get us there yet. But take, for example, the church I go to on Sunday. There's a lot of basic facts about that experience. And that's not just me in there feeling it in my fifis that Jesus exists. At least 200 people show up there every single Sunday. And they feel that feeling too, on, in unison, en masse. And there's seven or eight new people every single week who go, wait a minute, this does feel like God. And there's a lot of empirically verifiable facts, actual established facts involving that whole experience. And as we start examining that experience, we can start to realize that there is a path of knowable truth about what it is that I say I experience and you don't yet believe me. And the key word there, if you heard it clearly, was yet. Yet. Honestly, key word was yet. Why? Because a lot of you are going to start to believe me pretty soon. Because I'm telling the truth. 
And if science is anything about the investigation of truth, science will be able to verify 85 to 90 percent of my experience so that you who doesn't experience it directly can know I'm telling you the truth and know that I'm experiencing something real. Full stop. I have no doubt about that. If science doesn't lie, science ultimately going to point you right in my direction. Why? Because I ain't crazy and I ain't lying. That's why. And neither are the 200 people I go see, see every Sunday. Went, went to church on Christmas Eve. Seven people became Christians on the spot Christmas Eve. Why? Because the thing that we were saying was really happening was happening in a way that was real enough to them that they went, you don't know what? They're, they're, they're not crazy. Something's going on here. Became Christians on the spot. That's a real occurrence. That happens every single time I go to church. That's a real thing. In the real world, every minute of that is empirically verifiable as I just described it. Every minute of it. So, that will eventually get us there. But, getting back to the tweet at hand. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what Cameron's about to do with it. Like I said, most people would say he's better politician than I am. So, <laughs> I, I swear, they really would. His channel's better than mine. No, his channel's not better. What, did I say that? No, it's not. It's not. Mine's better. Mine's better. He just he interviews all these like dopey important people. I interview I interview you know Paul Gia. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know exactly where he was going with the tweet, but so far all he's done is help help the atheists to double down on their version of empirical reality. Neptune isn't you don't believe Neptune by faith. Yeah, you've never seen it with your own eyes, but every single minute of it that's made it real to you in the real world is verifiable in the real world through empirical means. It's, and it's not under dispute. So it do, the analogy doesn't hold and it doesn't quite work. We'll see if he's going somewhere with it to tie, you know, to, to, make it, to make it a really good point. But so far, on his point, I'm siding with the atheists. Everybody's used a telescope. You're not believing by faith that a telescope exists. Everybody, believe, everybody knows for a fact that the science is real. Why? Because we use scientific products every single day of our life. And if they were an error to the type of degree that we couldn't trust them about Neptune, we couldn't trust them about the phone that's in my hand. That's not faith. It's not. It's not faith at all. We're using their products as we speak. You're going to be listening to this on a scientifically, you know, if the science were faulty, you wouldn't, this wouldn't be on YouTube. The science is sound. So we're not using faith to, 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 you know, we're not just believing them about Neptune. There's a whole body of empirically verified, there's a whole body of knowledge behind us believing them about Neptune. It's not faith at all. It's not faith at all. It's not even close. So, there you have it, kids. That is all for now. So far, score, I guess score one for the atheist? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where he's going with it. Um, that is all for now, kids. Mass has ended. Go in peace. Amen.